ba 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 bom bom Hello my lovely bumblebees, it's Ethany and welcome back to my channel and today I am going to be talking to you about the use of magical wands in your modern witchcraft, what they do, how you use them and do you even need them at all? So buckle up kiddos, we're going to talk about well, this is gonna happen a lot today, so everyone just needs to get on board with it. So before I begin, I just wanted to reiterate that I do not speak on behalf of the entire community. This is just some information that you may choose to use in your craft, and I hope I give you something to pontificate. And with all that, as with everything I say, take what resonates with you and simply leave the rest. So what is a wand anyway? Well, a wand in modern witchcraft is a tool that is used to direct and point energy. This can be energy that you have started to channel into or through yourself or you have built up in your magical working. So wherever you point the wand, the energy will follow. Like all magical tools, wands are seen as an extension of yourself. So when you're working with them, they are seen as a full extension of your body. So it's actually the connection where you have the wand is where the actual energy goes from you through to the wand and then out through the tip, <laughs> just the tip. So when you use your wand in ceremony, ritual, spell work, you would use your dominant hand. I'm left-handed, so I would use it like this. I like to put my index finger along the wand. This is simply because this is also what you can use, the index finger, if you don't have a wand, your pointer finger. It's called a pointer finger for a reason. So that's how I would hold my wand and then the base of the wand would be at the base of my wrist. Now you basically have to do whatever feels right for you, but this is how I would use my wand and hold my wand in ceremony. Wands for me are connected to the element of fire which also connects my wands to the suits in the tarot and the wands suit. Because I came to the tarot through my witchcraft, that is how I connect the wands with my tarot. Some other ceremonial people, uh, ceremonial magicians and witches, pagans, will see the wand as the element of air, but I have always been a fire girl. When you craft your wand, you can set specific intentions chant mantras and also have different wands for different things. So you can have a wand for casting circle, for example, or you can have a wand used for healing and energy direction. It really depends on what you want to do with it. Wands can also just be an elemental representation on your altar. So many witches have wands, chalices, athames, cauldrons, pentacles, uh, senses, all sorts of things like that on the altar and this can be just something that you have on your altar. So why would you use a wand anyway? Well that is a very good question. Wands can help you focus your intention and visualize your direction of energy. When you give your mind something to follow that is visual, you are helping train your energetic and psychic selves to see energy because you are allowing the senses that you do have in sight and also in touch because you're holding the wand to focus somewhere. So it's a wonderful training tool for people who are working with their clairs. So do not underestimate how helpful it can be to have tools while you are building your skills and even for skilled practitioners. It can also be a wonderful tool to use if you're working with other witches. So say you're in a coven or you're at a open ritual and a lot of other people are basically pulling their intentions into maybe a mass healing, using a wand can be a way that everyone directs their energy into a single source. Wands can also be used to cast your magic circle and can also be a way that you create sigils or protective symbols in your space because they are there to draw energetic boundaries. So that is something I use my wand for quite a lot is by putting sigils and symbols in my protective practice and also for casting my circle. Although I am partial to the athame for that, I also use my wand. Remember, the biggest use of the wand is to direct energy. So whether you use your index finger or a wand or an athame, it's all about helping you focus your intention and direct energy to manifest whatever you are trying to work on. So the next question is, do you actually need a wand? And the short answer is, no, you don't need a wand at all. Some witches love having lots of tools 
and they craft them and make them with lots of intent and skill. Some witches go out and buy a wand and buy all their ritual tools and that's jam as well. And some people can't even have any tools because it's not safe for them to do so. You can use just your body and things you find in your natural environment and in your kitchen to work your witchcraft. You are not more or less of a witch if you have all the tools or none of the tools. Also, you don't have to use your wand every single time you cast a spell. I have two wands as I've shown you and I don't use them in every act of magic. One of them is on my working altar out in my working space and the other one sits on my personal altar in my room. And I just don't use them every time. So don't feel as though you have to use your tools every time you are in ritual and or casting a spell. Some people love using wands and they use them all the time. But as I mentioned, your index finger will do just fine. And you do not have to worry about having all of the things at your fingertips. I <laughs> get it, fingertips, <laughs> fingers, wands. So how do you make a wand? Firstly, you don't have to make a wand. Go out and buy one. I, I have a bought one. I have my Hermione Granger wand and it's fine. It's great, I use it all the time. So you can go out and buy a wand or have someone make one for you. There are some amazing artists on Etsy who will do you a solid wand. Some traditions in some covens also are that when you become initiated into their coven, you are given a wand made by another member of the coven. So there are lots of different ways that you can get your tools. Making a wand is of course going to allow it to be infused with your energy through every step of the way from going out and finding the piece of wood or the material you're going to use through preparing it, through decorating it, maybe even putting mantras and chants over it, all the way through blessing it on your altar and having it as your tool. You can do something completely fancy or you can do something very simple. It is all up to you. Traditionally, wands are made of wood please be very careful about the wood that you collect. There are sacred trees in every corner of this globe, although that is an oxymoron. There's no such thing as a corner in a globe. And everywhere in the world, there are sacred trees. And it is very important that you research the trees before you go and piss off any tree spirits. Also, there are endangered trees, which you should not be cutting into. And I highly recommend you don't cut into a tree at all. You find a branch that has fallen naturally or if you live on the coast, go find some driftwood. The next step after you have found the piece of wood you want to use is to allow it to dry out completely and to make sure there's no buggies hiding in there. You can also lightly bake the wood to make sure that it is completely dry. And then you can let your imagination go absolutely wild on you and decorate your wand. So this wand was actually made for me by a friend and I just wanna show you some of the ways that you can decorate your wand. So the hilt of the wand or the handle of the wand has been covered. We have some flowers on there. She has, oh, how beautiful is that crystal? I don't even know how she got that in there, but she hollowed out the top and put a crystal quartz in there. So crystal clear quartz is used as a um, magnifier and also the point is where to help point the, the energy. She wood burned the elements and my name on it, put a B and some also some more crystals on there as well. So as you can see, she has decorated this but left it unstained and it's sanded down and it is so stinking beautiful. I absolutely love it. So this is an example of what you can do with your wand. You can even put polymer clay. I've seen people put like drill a hole um, or put an extension on the bottom of their wand and put charms and like good luck charms, things they find out in nature that they want to keep like acorns and things like that. You can literally do absolutely anything. And if you want to use crystal or stone or something else or metal, I've seen some beautiful pewter and crystal ones, then use that. It really is up to you. Another thing a lot of witches do is they coil copper wire around the wand as a conductor. So do a little bit of a Pinterest search and see what you can come up with in regards to how to decorate your wand. But remember, you can literally get a beautiful stick out in nature, make sure it's dry, sand it down, and that's it. You've got yourself a wand. Remember the material that you use is not as important as the love and dedication that you put into your tools. Even if someone makes you one, 
or you buy one, you can still make it special. It's the energy and the connection that you have with that wand while you're working in circle or in with your magic. When it comes to storing wands, it's really about what is comfortable for you. Some people have to wrap them in a tea towel and place them in a box because all of their altar materials are in there. Some people like myself leave them open on their altar which is absolutely fine, it's ready to go. And some people have specific drawers or trays that they have all their tools in, kept safe so nobody touches them by accident. Remember, do what works for you. That is my Wands 101 introduction, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments below if you have a wand and if you use it. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, why? Go and hit that button and I'll see you all next time.